Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, back and ready to do a movie review this week. Well, it's just been a while. I mean, I had to take uh, two weeks of a break, you know, doing errands and posting commercial breaks, trying to fix things up on YouTube and all. Yeah, not to mention I got a haircut now, as you can see. I'm also wearing my brand new Marvel t-shirt that I just got at Big Lots for only 14 bucks. Great deal. It's a long sleeve one. And it has um, the characters. And I figure that's supposed to be Black Widow right there. Along with Spider-Man. Captain America. Iron Man. Thor. And Hulk. <laughs> and it just says Marvel. Awesome shirt. Speaking of which, I'm going to be reviewing an MCU film that just came out uh, recently. Um, already becoming a hit so far because I actually went to see the film a few weeks ago. But it came out on September 3rd, 2021. Simply called Shang Chi and the Legend of Ten Rings. It's a story about a young man, Shang Chi. He was forced to confront his past, you know, working with his father, Rain Wu, who is uh, the leader of the Ten Rings organization, and train him as an assassin, which draws him and his sister, Jia Ling, into the search for the mythical village. Now I know it's been in development since 2001, but they had to take a lot of time till 2018, which writer David Cullaham was tired, uh, joining in with um, director Destin Daniel Critton, who also wrote the screenplay, with Andrew Lanham. So of course, this is. Um, Marvel's MCU film going for the the martial arts, which was part of that from the through the comics, and it's part of Phase Four. Um, hoping to follow up with some more um, Marvel films to join, especially after Black Widow came out. Yeah, which is kind of interesting that um, that was probably the only film I saw that didn't have. Uh, or maybe I left the feeder a lot later than that. But I was expecting to see like a, a post credit scene at the end, but yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. And I won't spoil that uh, for this uh, movie because I know there's a lot of surprises. Uh, I saw the teaser for this movie um, before it came out. came in with some mixed results, but I didn't expect it to see this coming. But usually with MCU, there's always going to be a blend of comedy mixed with action, adventure, with lots of cool special effects and all. Just what you're in for. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, let's begin with the review. It stars Simu Liu, who um, is a Canadian actor. He's actually been in other stuff, too. Um, he was in a TV show on CBC television called Kim's Convenience. Uh, Aquafina, uh, for those who don't know, of course, he, she was, of course, the, the actress and rapper. I know she was recently in the movie uh, Raya and the Last Dragon. But, yeah, she's been known for singing the song My Bag. And she was in the TV show Girl Cold on MTV. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, surprisingly enough, she's the best thing about the movie. <laughs> well, for the comic relief and and all. <laughs> uh, Mangar Sang, I don't know if I pronounced her name right, but it's okay. Uh, Fala Chen. Forleon uh, Montana, Benedict Wan, uh, Michelle Yale, 
you have the legendary uh, actress and of course has done a lot of her own stunts and I know she was in movies like Project Tiger Hidden Dragon along with being in the opposite with Jackie Chan in Super Cop which is part of Police Story uh, Tomorrow Never Dies, you know, the James Bond movie with Pierce Brosnan and many others but I know she was previously in the sequel Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 so it's nice to see her reprise her role as being non. And ben Kingsley, yes, makes an appearance in the movie. Apparently just reprising his role from the film Iron Man Free. But of course he's a legendary actor known for playing many roles he's done. I mean of course he was a Cameo Award winner for for the movie Gandhi. Tony Long Along with Ronnie Chang, Wang Hua, Jody Long, Ellis Liu, Paul He, uh, Tosh Chin, and Andy Lee. And it's written by Dave Callahan, who I believe wrote uh, the Expendables films. Uh, joining in with Andrew Lanham and Destine Daniel Creton who also directed the movie, of course, based on the Marvel comics. Be advised, there will be some spoilers. Bear with me, but I'm going to do my best for my review. So here we go. The movie began set thousands of years ago. Zhu Wenwu, who is played by Tony Lung, had discovered the mystical Ten Rings, which grants him immortality and godly powers. By establishing the Ten Rings organization, which is how he actually conquers kingdoms and toppling governments throughout ancient history. By 1996, he searches for a village named Talo, which harbors mystical beasts to expand his entire power. By traveling through a magical forest to the village entrance, where it's being stopped by a village guardian named Ying Li, who's played by Fala Chen, with basically doing their martial arts together, they soon fell in love. But the villagers reject Wen Wu, so Li decided to leave with him. And then Wen Wu abandons the Ten Rings organization. That he created. So now he can finally be with his wife and have two children named Sheng Chi and Zai Lin, yeah. who is soon to be played by Samu Lu and Munger, uh, Munger Zhang. I hope I say that right. Anyway. When Shang Chi was seven years old, he began to witness a murder to his mother, Li, by Wen Wu's enemies, the Iron Gang. Which Wen Wu once again takes up the rings that he has uh, through his fist to massacre the entire gang, you know, right in front of him, to resume leadership of his organization and has Shang Chi to undergo brutal training in martial arts, which Zai Lin secretly copied the entire training. So now, at this point on, he's going to become the next assassin that his father wanted him to be by the time he reaches uh, 14. And he wanted him to go directly to San Francisco so that way he'll be able to complete another mission as he trained him. But he refused and decided to run away secretly. I mean he basically lied to his sister by saying that I'm going to be back in three days but three days unfortunately never happened. I know, cliche. So yes after fulfilling his mission, he demonized 
his entire name and decided to go for a new identity in San Francisco as Sean. <laughs> so, and he, by present day, Sean Chi now works as a ballet with his best friend, Katie, played by Aquafina. <laughs> and yes, this is the, the story right there because she doesn't know anything about his past, but of course, most of the time, she just goes around, you know, you know, taking the ballet and just racing around San Francisco. <laughs> and not only that, but they just go around having fun. They started singing the, a lot of karaoke songs <laughs> during the night. So, next morning, um, just when they were already having all that fun they were doing, uh, Shing Chi just came by to pick up Katie at her home. You know, that's where he saw Katie's family running by just to get ready to go to work. They took the bus, which then leads to a bigger fight as they've been attacked by the Ten Rings. Yeah, the entire organization who actually steals the pendant that Lee gave to Shang-Chi when he was young. And when we would honestly provide Shang-Chi with the location of Xilin and fearing that the Ten Rings will go after Xilin's matching pendant from Lee, which I, I know at this point on, uh, he receives a postcard from his sister, if that was the case. Um, but I know, it led to this bigger chase scene all the way around. And I know there's, this, you know how this is going to happen, because there's always going to be some one um, passenger is just going to be filming all this on Viro. So now you're going to see you know, Shang-Chi going around beating the crap out of all the the Ten Rings uh, gain around <laughs> and it causes a lot of collisions and the bus breaks apart, you know, double dutch bus and then at this point on <laughs> Katie ends up taking over for the bus driver who just got shot or attacked and now uh, she, she was trying to do his best she was trying to do her best to stop the bus <laughs> but ends up crashing all the other cars around all the way down town <laughs> already already downtown <laughs> yeah so therefore Shane Chi decided to meet her hoping to reveal his past to Katie who insists on helping him by the way they're about to find Zane Lin somewhere in an underground fight club in Macau which she founded after escaping from Wenwu the Tam Rains attack the Fight Club, and this is, of course, we find out that Zhang Lin is all grown up. Yeah, she had a bowl cut and all. Looking very beautiful, strong, um, flexibility and all. So, I <laughs> know. So, of course, it leads to the, the big fight between him and, and her. So, of course, we learned that she actually built the entire um, Fight Club and, and all. And then she found out that she didn't send him the postcard. It was actually Wenwu the whole time. So now the Ten Rains started to attack. And Wenwu arrives to capture Shang-Chi, Katie, Xilin, and her pendants. Yeah, all the rest of the game. Uh, which kind of led to that scene where, <laughs> I know this is going to be funny. I'm going to mention it right away. Was when, <laughs> when Katie was like hanging on to that um, vine you know, through the construction sites, yeah, where all the gains are starting to fall down to their depths. Uh, she even sang the first verse of the song from the Eagles uh, Hotel California <laughs> by saying, On the dark there's a highway, cool wind in my hair. <laughs> and she was ready to fall off, you know, before Shang Chi was about to save her. And then at this rate, Xilene came to save her too. <laughs> And all that before Rang Wu arrives. They're being taken to the Ten Rains compound where Ren Wu uses the pendants to reveal the magical map leading to Talo. 
He explains that he has heard Lee coin him and believes that he has been held captive in Talo behind the steel gates. So they thought maybe she died or, or so. Maybe that was just part of the, uh, the spirit. He plans to destroy the village until they release her, but when Chauvin and, and Katie objected the idea, he eventually imprisons them. And this is where we lead to a bigger surprise that we didn't expect to see this coming. But here we go. They met a former actor, Trevor Slattery, who's played by Ben Kingsley, who, believe it or not, was the same man who played the Mandarin, yeah, the, um, the terrorist, in Iron Man 3, which led to that bigger surprise in the movie because it was sort of a cop-out. But, of course, he's not the villain like we thought he was, but, but of course, he's just a Shakespearean actor, a theater actor, I, I guess I could say that, you know, just performing everything that he was chosen to do. So it's obviously all the villains out there always hires him to do the job. Anyway, it turns out that the Ten Reigns have prison for impersonating Wen Wu, you know, trying to you know, grab his secret around. But he also has a Hundun companion named Morris. Yeah, it's one of those creatures without a face. <laughs> But it does have wings and all. It's like a dog, in a way. But they offer the guide to go to Talo. So they escape. They had to drive all the way to Talo. Which, exists, which actually existed in a separate dimension with various Chinese mythological creatures around. And that's where they met uh, Lee's sister, Yinan, who was played by... Michelle Yale, who explains the history of Talo thousands of years ago, which the village had had been attacked by the so consuming dweller in darkness, joining with its minions. Yeah, but it was being saved by a Chinese dragon called the Great Protector, who helps seal the dark gates to the dweller's world. But according to her, it's been influenced by Wenwu to believe that Li might still be alive somewhere. So, so that way he'll be able to open the gates. So at that point on, Shang chi Zai Ling, and Katie started to join the village in training to prepare themselves for a bigger war that's going to happen. And this is where Wenwu joins trying to stop. And then Shang chi is definitely going to fight against his father, hoping to find a way to actually stop from opening the village and all. I'm going to leave it at that. So that's part of that particular surprise that I had to say for, for the spoilers, but that's okay. It's not like I'm going to give away the other parts here. Uh, however, though, there is a cameo appearance in the movie, if you're going to be surprised to know. But... If you saw the movie uh, Doctor Strange, well, you're definitely in for it because his assistant Wong, who's the master of the mystical arts, um, actually joins, <laughs> played by Benedict Wong. So it's really cool to see him. And yes, there's even a moment where, well, that's basically in the post credits. I guess I might as well mention it just for the sake of it. Uh, but there is one scene where, yes, they did end up singing karaoke songs <laughs> to the song uh, Hotel California, but, yeah. Yeah, it was very surprising how it turned out, though. I didn't expect it much, but, uh, I mean, who knows? I thought maybe it was going to be, like, sort of a mediocre um, MCU film that I, even for its martial arts theme and Asian culture right there, but it turns out to be a quite bigger surprise. And the only thing I didn't think this was going to happen was because I didn't think that we were going to get lots of laughs. 
lots of comedy elements into the movie, but I guess it was more comedy as opposed to the the martial arts action. You know, especially with the ten rings from the fist and and the, the battle between both father and son and all and, and how this is going to turn out. Also has some wonderful writing too and some wonderful martial arts scenes that I've I couldn't believe I spotted. I mean, there's I guess there is a bit of a Quadra Tiger Hidden Dragon reference here somewhere. Especially the scene with uh, Michelle Yale you know, performing this uh, particular move that she was doing. Um, which creates the flying effect around. And she was moving those leaves and all. And <laughs> there's even a moment too when Katie was just already preparing to fight, you know, trying to use the the arrows, but unfortunately the rest of the villagers couldn't let her fight, but I know, she's just, it's like she can't even do anything until the last month. And how powerful those rings really are, I mean, everything. Yeah. In fact, that of course, the father had to be the villain here, even though he tries not to be at this point, but but I know. I mean, he really does love his wife so much that pretty much everything affects him. You know, his organization and and his uh, immortality powers that he has. Everything. Yeah. But at that point on, um, Shang Chi's surprisingly a great character to join. Take some time to get used to, but you're right there. Um, I had to say uh, Katie is the best part of the movie. I had to say that because, you know, she pretty much is the comic relief. She pretty much steals the entire show throughout the movie, no matter what she does. <laughs> I mean, she comes up with a lot of crazy jokes here and there, and, you know, she takes a lot of time. She begins to try to find out his secrets that he didn't think he would reveal to everyone, but that's where she gets into all the action. <laughs> uh, but she was very funny. And I also love uh, Zhu Salim, too. I mean, she's a strange sister, but she was very strong, beautiful, flexible, and she could definitely kick ass, no doubt. Um, of course, um, Tony Lang who played uh, what, Wen Wu, you know, was the villain with the fodder. I mean, yeah, of course, as I mentioned already, he was great. Everyone was great in the movie. Not a bad scene whatsoever. Yes, I'm definitely going to say that because I, except maybe for the, uh, the reveal of what was going on and you know, and how he lied, and, and how he had to change his identity and all that, and how he was trying to get away from his father, didn't want to be a, an assassin and all. You know, we get the idea. And then there's other villains, you know, joining by, you know, trying to, sorry, <laughs> just trying to go by and going after him, trying to steal the pendant and all, yeah. I mean... For its particular running time, it's just very fun to watch. And I'll never get tired of it, too. I mean, I just laugh so loud watching this. But I had fun with all the nice action scenes. You know, everything that happened in its place. I mean, it's nice to see that Marvel's doing something different for a change. I mean, hey, you know, it spans many cultures around. Diversity, you know race, gender, and all, I mean, they're going strong, but, yeah, and I'm glad that it's becoming a hit so far, um, for its budget of, uh, between 150 and 200 million, uh, it's already making it up to 363.4 million, but it's going to get there a lot higher. It's already joining in with Free Guy, you know, becoming the highest-grossing film. So, 
Let's hope it keeps on going. And before they end up hitting to uh, 4K, Blu-ray, and DVD, along with digital. <laughs> so. so I'm I'm really happy. <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, and I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sapora, and I'll see you later. Bye.